What's going on guys? Bladezilla here and today we're taking a look at a real special knife from Shirogorov. This is a special edition icebreaker F95 or F95 icebreaker which is uh, pretty cool. It's something I've been hunting around for quite a while now trying to find and uh, I've been fortunate enough to find one. So we will get into this knife and uh, talk about it but first as always Please check out my web website, bladezilla.ca, where a lot of this stuff is available. Right now I've got F3 Outdoor, some Kamis, uh, adding more to it every day. Um, lots of stuff, lots of, lots of fun. Bladezilla.ca, check it out. There is my little shout out, because I always like to do that. Surprisingly, um, I get asked all the time what the website is. So uh, I try to leave it in every link, and uh, you know, in the channel name of the YouTube channel right now, Bladezilla. .ca. <laughs> anyway, uh, super cool knife, uh, F95. How sick is this? Big beast of a uh, special edition. Lots to talk about with this. I've got a bit of a cold myself today, so I apologize if my, uh, my voice isn't the normal Jaguars purr like normal. Uh, but, nonetheless, we have to keep things rolling and talk about this knife. So, where to start? Well, I need to do weights, I need to do measurements, I seem to be forgetting doing this lately. So, let's start there. Okay, we are coming in at eight and three quarters or less, depending on how your eyesight is. But with that bead, it is a little bit more obviously, depending on the what you want to do with it. Blade length should be 95 mil sharpened, but we are right around four inches to the center of the choil. Handle length, uh, let's see where are we at, four and three quarters, maybe a little more, four and seven eighths, something like that. All depending on kind of how you would normally see it. Weight wise, a couple things before we get into weight, okay? It's a beefy knife. It's not light, it's obviously been skeletonized, it's been milled, but the whole point of this is how it's got a real big, thick blade thickness to it. So it's going to be heavy. It wouldn't it wouldn't shock me, like a normal F95 would probably be around 4 ounces, 4.3, something like that. This one's probably closer to 5, maybe a hair over. But let's get a weight on it. Don't be, don't be too afraid when it comes to the weight of this, just because it is, it's big, it's beefy, but trust me, the action itself is worth it. And I'm going to put it on with the bead, so try to get everything. 5.1, 5.1, I'm just going to zero one more time. Put the cloth on there, never know. 5.1, so yeah, a hair over 5 ounces, so I wasn't, wasn't too far off. I figured it was going to be close to that. It's hefty. It's hefty. It's not. It's not hefty in a bad way. It's. Uh, it's solid. It's rock solid. It's ice solid. Um, so where to start? Okay. So take Shirogorov's quote Sabenza of design. Right. This is their their Sabenza F95. It's been around for over a decade. Super solid, reliable, great fit in hand. Jimping, excellent jimping. I don't actually have any F95 turtles or zeros kicking around. Um, okay, I do have some F95 other ones, but uh, I don't have any of the uh, the production turtles, which is going to be a great comparison just for the action and the milling. But let me take a look. Maybe I have something special here. So I couldn't, I couldn't find, uh, I thought I had some production turtles, but I don't. So I guess the only turtle or F95 that I can really compare it to, I've got a couple floating around that will do some comparison. So let's get that and I guess started. Um, and uh, you know what, let's first show some sizes and then we'll do the, the F95 comparison. So size wise, so we'll grab our Stellar that we always like to show for size. And remember the angle, right? So if I, if I just move this down, I'd say it'll look way smaller at that angle. 
than if I put it right in front of it. Remember, it's just the angle of the camera. I have to have light coming from somewhere and I have to angle the camera a little bit. So there's your Stellar uh, and then our Neon, which uh, today is going to be a Custom Division Neon. I've been showing that one a little bit here. It's cool. So there's kind of your three sizes and there is one up from the F95 being that it is a 111 or I guess you could even say the 110 kickstop or the Astrum uh, version of that knife now. Um, unfortunately I don't have any here but this is what it is so you get a nice sprinkling anyway of the neon which is a great knife everybody loves the neon it's such a good carry size uh, the, this particular one's obviously a custom division, so you get, you know, it's a little thicker than, say, the standard uh, Neon Zero that I have here. You know, you can just tell by the spacing, usually. A little heftier. Cool knife. Stellar. Um, I think we've got to be due for some more production Stellars, so I, I'd like to kind of not show this one every time. Um, I, I apologize, but it is kind of a new category of sizes for them over the last little while, so... Um, it's always good to show this because, you know, you get a nice in-between between the F95 or Quantum and the uh, the Neon. So, uh, and then our obviously F95. So, let's grab a couple. I'm going to go with, we've got an F95 Custom Division. You guys have seen that. Pretty cool knife. Beefy, just like this. And, and that's kind of why I want to show that. We've got our F95 Turtle in Custom Division as well. You guys have seen that knife. I'm sure plenty. Super cool. Probably my most favorite knife that uh, I have from Shirogoroff right now. Other than one, which might be uh, tied right now with this. And I've always loved the Turtle, but um, this one's just special. Um, these two are probably the most close in terms of action as well as size and weight. Because this is a beefy, uh, this is a beefy bish, as they say. Just really good roller, roller bearing action on it. But let's grab a couple other F95s. So we've got the one that I was referring to earlier. The Silk Slim. Very cool F95. Whole different conversation here that I have yet to have with you guys on YouTube. But, uh, oh boy. That knife is just incredible. We have our production F95... NL with Chromax, which I'd say is actually, in a lot of ways, actually very similar size-wise, handle-wise, feel-wise to the Icebreaker, because it's a thick, heavy knife. The only difference is, and I'm going to put that Silk Slim away, the F5 Silk Slim, because I don't want to bump it, but um, before I get sidetracked, super cool knife, more to come on this, I will be doing a video on that, absolutely. Um, these two, I would say, are actually surprisingly similar size and feel-wise, uh, both because it's heavy, and this one is not milled out internally, right? So I don't know if you can see inside there, it's just blank, but it's just heavy, it's thicker, you know, it's just, it feels like a heavy knife, and I, I kind of get that same feel with this one. Although now that I'm kind of feeling it, it almost feels a little lighter. <laughs> it's funny how that works. There's so much milling going on on this knife. And that's, I guess, the place to start. You have this beautiful Shergoroff bear nestled in above the pivot in hibernation. You've got a couple lines here as well, right? You, you, normally that line up here on the F95 is nice and straight. And in this case, you have a nice little cutout for that bear. Which is, I guess, kind of symbolic, right? Of the bear cutting into... Uh, it's like an arctic ice sheet, how it's cutting through it. That's kind of cool. I don't know if that's meant to be or not, but I, that's what I get out of it. Now the milling is very similar to almost like a like a seashelly kind of pattern. Um, if I had, you guys remember the uh, the Hattie magnetic that I had? The sh the uh, scale was very similar to this on the backside. Very very similar, in fact. That's what I get from this. This is almost like a dual-sided version of that. The The quality level for a special edition, it's through the roof, guys. Like, this is at another level compared to a standard production. The finish is, I'd say, somewhere between a custom division 
on this knife between the custom division and the production, but leaning a lot more towards the custom division. It's running on multi-row bearings, which, uh, where are they putting? Normally they put it up here, but I think it's back here on this. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, should be a little MRBS on the inside of the frame here. Now I am seeing it on the camera. I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but MRBS, it's written on there. Um, remember, single row bearings, SRBS. MRBS is multi-row bearings. Then you get into single row roller bearing, and then double row roller bearings, which is typically found on their customs. The custom divisions typically, and there are exceptions, have roller bearings, single row roller bearings, which are like hot dogs, or needle bearings. And then multi-row bearings, uh, like on this, I believe, I believe there's 21 aside, and they're laid out in a pattern like a pinwheel, so three balls in a row, kind of like the rays of the sun in a circle. Okay, 21 balls per side. And on this one, the action, it's ridiculous. Like, oh my god. It's up there with the Sinkovich uh, bios and the Kami for action. Oh, it just floats home and it has a nice snappy detent to it, which just pulls it in. It's quite unique, quite unique. The big thing is on this, the icebreaker. So you're getting a very thick blade stock. A very, very thick. And and I, I don't know what it is. I Like, I'm not measuring it. I would assume it's got to be four mils. Me, like, it's got to be more than three and a half. I'm assuming four mils. But you look at the flare that it has to the tip. It's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. No, no, like, super crazy beveling at the top. It's like, it's all about simplicity. It really reminds me of the F95-0. The, the flat kind of top that it had. You can go anywhere you want. It's comfortable. Put your foot on your foot on it. Please don't put your foot on it. Put your finger on it. The jimping's just spot on. It's like the smaller jimping style, so it's nice and grippy, but still functional with a glove. You can choke up, go to the front, utilize it as much as you want for slicing on that M390 blade. The tip doesn't flare like some of the others do. It's just solid. Now, as I said, M390 blade, you've got a kind of a, a cool pattern up on the top here, and that's going to be some work. I don't know how, I don't know how you're going to kind of show this, but it's a pretty complex grind. Right? It's like, almost like a cutout, like a boo, which looks nice, solid. It's just one more little detail that just really stands out that you don't always see. Hopefully the camera that it's already freaking out. Eh? I don't know how close I can get without going crazy, but you should see that kind of grind cut in there. It's pretty nice. How good does that look? Wow. Yeah. It's just a good looking blade. Obviously drop point. Fairly flat. Fairly uh, just simple, right? Just looks so good. I'll show you that from the other side as well. That is a real cool, cool thing. Um, you know, one of the things that is so interesting to me is like how so on the blade you put M390 here, which is which is fine. But I always say, why are we stamping this on the blade? You know, you're you're usually when you have that on this side, you'll have a sheer graph bear here, and they've already put that bear up on the uh, titanium frame. So why not put M390 in a you know hide it pack right there? like we do on a lot of the others. It'll be somewhere in there. Like, if I give you an idea, I'll grab that F95 turtle, and, no, that's written on the blade as well, but it's not stamped. I always thought it was stamped up further. Um, let's grab the F95, that's s 90 me. Oh man, I could do this all day. There we go, there's a bio. So see what I'm saying, when they put that, M398, you kind of just tuck it in there. So it's out of the way of the cutting path. And there, in this case, they obviously have this written on the blade and the Sinkovich design, right? Like that's what they've done on this design. But I, I really, 
If I could choose, I wish they did more of this. Because as you utilize it, you're not going to wear it off the cutting edge of the blade. And that's fine, it's just those little details. Little details. You obviously have the Shergroff Custom kind of tooling little bits here, which are screwdrivers essentially, but let's be honest, you can get away with a flathead screwdriver, um, or, uh, sorry, there it's, uh, my god, I'm losing my marbles today. It's Shergroff's Custom Bit. You can get away with a flathead screwdriver. I wouldn't recommend it. Use a penny, use something softer than the hardware material is made of. Or you get, uh, you know, a tool like this. You get the bits in there. And uh, you're never going to have a problem with it. You're not going to also want to really take this guy apart. I don't see why you would need to unless you're really beating the crap out of it. But nonetheless, you can also probably use a folded credit card. Now, another thing, look at this clip. Interesting. So, a couple things I noticed on this clip here right off the hop. So, obviously, you have the micro milling here, right, which is the same type of milling. It looks even tighter on the lock bar itself. The lock bar, as well, is not uh, like the, some of the other F95s. I haven't shown this. So, that the silk slim. So, you see how. The lock bar groove is on the inside here, right? And then they kind of move to the external one, right? So it's obviously external, which is which is fine. Looks cool. Some people like the simplicity of the old style, where it's kind of more internal, but that's fine. Um, the one thing I do notice. So let's grab that F95. Oh no. No, never mind. The uh, pocket clip itself is angled onto the frame, which is always nice, right? So when it's angled onto the frame, when you hold this in your hand, you put pressure onto the pocket clip, it takes it away from the lock bar. And typically, even on like the Quantums, there's like a little shelf kind of cut out. Um, if I can show you that, that's what I wanted to show you. This doesn't have the shelf, but I just wanted to show that, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. So here's a Quantum Ursus. See how there's like a little shelf for that clip to kind of lean on? This one kind of just leans right on top of the milling, it looks like. Unless I'm missing something that's it's leaning underneath, I can't really see. Looks like it's just sitting flush on top, which is cool. Nonetheless, it takes the pressure off of the lock bar, so it's nice and smooth to fire out and put back in. When you hold these, I get asked this all the time. When you hold these guys in your hand, you're going to shoot it out, right? Say I'm about to launch this. Just don't hold your finger on the frame there. Don't put it on the lock. You can either hold it up here, right? Or just hold the pocket clip. If you're holding the pocket clip, all the pressure is off. And it just, it's, so, it's just so easy as I like it, it's stuck. But just hold the pocket clip, no issues. But if you hold the frame, right? With your middle finger or something, like it won't come out. They're very sensitive to that. Now, as I said earlier, this is, uh, I believe, uh, one of 100 worldwide. And they all say one of 100 on the inside, just so you're aware. And it will say that right in here. I don't know if it'll pop out or not on the video. Um, I can barely see it on my little screen, but it should say one of 100. They all say that. They're not all one. Unless I'm crazy and mine's number one, which I wouldn't mind, but I'm pretty sure they're all one of 100. And, uh, which is cool. Super cool. They have had, I think I've seen a few full custom versions of this knife, which are hard to find. And, uh, probably in excess of, you know, 16, 18, 20k now, US. And it's, uh, typically I think they're made by Sheer, uh, Sergey himself on those ones, obviously, but... I still think they're multi-row bearings. I don't think they're rollers. Super cool. Super, super cool. Now, let's talk on the internals here. Let me grab my little light. It is all skeletonized, I believe. Should be. And let's take a look at what that looks like on the inside. So we have our little wavy snake kind of going out. It's all hollowed out. That's beautiful. 
So in hand, it, you notice it. It's definitely a, a heavy blade, but it feels very light in the handle. Hopefully you can see kind of different angles. And I'll do that as well. Beautiful, beautiful. And then underneath, do we have a little pin back there? Look at that little pin on that back spacer. How good is that? Come on, man, focus. Help me help you. A little pin sticking in there. That's cool. Uh, blue anodized, I believe. Blue anodized and stone washed, obviously tie. But I was when I got this, I was like, I wonder. You've seen so many pictures of this, and like I said, I've been trying to find it forever. Um, you see so many pictures of this knife, and I was like, I, I always thought it would be a little bit blue for some reason. Like more blue than it is. And uh, it definitely isn't. You know, just the backspacer. Looks solid. It's a, it's a cool knife, man. Really cool. You, get, you have... Uh, I always talk about how on uh, we're gonna go talk about the um, backspacer now. So I always talk about this in my videos. I always say, you know, the Stellar, for example. Yeah, you can put on a, uh, some lanyard or whatever through, put the paracord, run it through the frame, and it's got a hole, right? And I never, I, 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 I should bring a little piece of string and actually show you on these videos, like just how that would look. It's so nice that I have one with the lanyard on it. So a lot of people just cut it off. Um, for collectibles, guys, never cut that thing off. You know, fine, untie it, put it gently in the box. This string will probably depreciate the, the knife a few hundred dollars as soon as you cut it off, as ridiculous as it is. Beads are all collectible, as you know. So just don't even go down that road. Just, if you don't like it, just untie it. It's not a big deal. You just whoop, and she's, and she's done. The bead itself, I'm going to show you if the camera will allow me. I should probably be doing this with a different lens, but it may work. World Oceanic International Flight. Super cool. Nice uh, coloring to it, right? Matching bead. And on the back. Oh my god, how sick is that? That's a bead, guys. Like, are you kidding me? Look at this. This is a bead. Look at the detail. This is nuts. One of the coolest beads I think I've seen from Shira Goroff. Um, so some of the F3NS, you know, special edition beads are pretty cool. But this one, uh, this one takes the cake for me. I think it's one of the coolest. Uh, it has to be one of the coolest out there. Yeah, like, come on. The details through the roof. It's obviously matching with the little, you know, Anno in the middle and stuff. It's just cool. The icebreaker. Um, I don't know much about the icebreaker trip itself. I know they went up to, I think it was like the Antarctic or something for a trip. And then uh, on some of the customs, I think a couple of them, or maybe it was just one of the customs, it, it was actually, it went on the trip with them. Uh, it went on that trip. So pretty cool story. I'm sure it's something I'm missing. You know, I, if I find it, I'll leave a link below. But if you're more than, you know, if you want to write a cool passage on it below, I would love to know more about it. I'm sure there's all kinds of stories on it. But uh, it's, it's not just a knife. It actually has a, a history. It has a story to it, which is cool. Super cool. Oh, just nuts. I can't get over this, uh, the milling for a production level or production plus maybe, or custom division minus. The milling's nuts. I, like, I, I can't get over this. It's some of the best. It's very, it's at the same level or maybe not quite as much as the bio. Very similar level, I'd say. It's highly desirable. I'll tell you that they're, they're worth more now than they were when they came out. And now that there's a hundred of them, you know, people are using these. They're slowly depreciating them. The, the mint are like new in box. They're becoming rarer and rarer to find. You know, I just so happen to have one right here. And this one, I'm telling you, like, there's a few knives in my collection I will not sell. This is one of them. I just, uh, I, I love F95s. I love the story, the history behind this guy, and the milling is just at a different level. 
I think it's one of the coolest, in my opinion. M390 blade, sure. You know, S90 view would be cooler. Um, but whatever. Not a big deal. Now, I did... I did think that... Uh, there's something going on with these washers inside. Or, or sorry, like... I thought they were like steel washers. In conjunction with multi-row bearings. I remember hearing something that they're a little bit different on this knife compared to some of the others. Um, it could just be me reading into things wrong, but without opening this, I don't know. Um, but I remember hearing something about how it had like steel washers or underlays or something, so... That is pretty cool. Now, it does have a, obviously, metal lock bar insert, slash over travel stop. And all that's going to do is when you move this lock bar over, it's going to stop from going too far. And the uh, the metal lock bar insert, which uh, looks like we're at a very light lockup, which is pretty standard for sure Goroth. You can fine tune the materials, right, between M390 and titanium, so that, lo and behold, uh, both you can replace it as well as you don't get any lock stick. And that's that's the one thing that it gets really really annoying with some of these knives. Like, you just things happen, things bend. Put it in your pocket, you use them. You put tons of torque through the lock bar. Uh, cutting things and wedging it around and stuff and it's it's nice to have that be replaceable and it is replaceable via a, a Torx right and I think I think on the newer F95s or even on the customs they like flip this around on the old like the Silk Slim that is an actual custom bit I think I don't think it's a reverse bit and they ground it I think it's just a small external screw Right? So, see that what I'm talking about? How it's not a Torx, the little guy here? I always say this is small, medium, large. So you have um, all three sizes on this guy. Small, medium, large. See what I'm saying? But on the F95 Turtles, I think they put it on the inside. So, there's this. See what I'm saying? How now it's screwed from the inside out. It's funny how they do that. All these little tweaks and changes. Now, I always do like to show this, okay? On the lock bar itself, watch how it pokes up, right? It's elevated versus the rest of the, uh, the show scale here. So, see how it pokes up there? And also, gorgeous milling on that as well. Get that with the right light, oh, your mind's gonna be blown. But it pokes up, and when you roll this, you see that. And what that is, is uh, it's just super easy to find with your finger. When you're rolling it off the side, it pops up higher than the other side. And it's got a nice bevel cut, obviously. It's just comfortable. It's easy to find. It's comfortable. Okay? Especially with a, a thick blade. You want to have that bevel cut in there. There's also some rolled machining here as well. It's nice and smooth. There's no hot spots on this knife either. I was kind of expecting because it's so thick. I was expecting some more hot spots, but it's all rounded, all milled, micro milled through every little location that you can imagine. On the back, that's a cool little spot to be doing that. See here? This it's this kind of detail that look, you don't even real I didn't even realize this, but like you look at this and you go, okay, we're gonna put a screw here and we're gonna bevel the, the edges here, but because we want some strength for this screw, we're going to skip this spot and then continue it down the line. That's a nice detail. You see it? And they do it on the other side of the screw too. Like, that is a really cool detail, but, you know, they could easily just go whoop, grind that down, no big deal. But then you're probably going to have issues with that screw sticking out. It'd be a hot spot, blah, blah, blah. That's like, these are the details with sheer gore offs so you just, no one talks about. It's just, uh, it's just done so well. Blade, I haven't checked, but I imagine it's perfectly center. Yes. Not even a question. Just, uh, that's Shiro. I'll show you from the other side. Dead center, lots of room. Lots of room for the ice to build up, because it's so hot. Pin underneath the backspace here, one of them. Man, there's so much skeletonization. It's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. 
I'm thoroughly impressed with this one, and it's a it's a nice blend between production and custom division. Very nice blend. Um, high end high end machining on this one. Some of the best, and highly collectible. And this is uh, this is one that I'm an F95 whore, and uh, I love this one. Oh, man. Absolutely love it. Uh, okay, so let's see. Have I wrapped it up? Have I talked about it? So M390 blade, the cool customization uh, on the actual jimping. That's a nice little touch. Flat top, good ergos, good jimping. Lock bar insert, the cool bead, the skeletonized handles, the angled pocket clip with no bench, and the blue anno one of one fifty or one of a hundred. The multi row bearings on that side, I think. Oh, and then I guess I should also say that on the flipper tab, there's a lot of come on, man. There's a lot of beveling caught on. Uh, cut in behind the flipper tab. So when you flip this guy down, it's just nice and smooth on your fingers. No hot spots, no cuts, no pinching, nothing like that. So that's good. Um, I guess there could be an argument on this. Why the backspacer doesn't fill all the way up here. And that's fair. Um, probably to have access to inside, I'm imagining. But as we know on some of the later F95s, they're starting to kind of close that off and squish the materials together as you can see on this turtle you know so they're they're doing something there problem is the gap between the flipper tab and the frame if there's any tolerance issues it's not going to work now that silk slim i don't think they did anything there i think it's sealed off and the gap as well is almost non-existent nice blue backspace here i might have to do a little photo shoot with these guys because uh, the blue look really good together. Really cool. And I guess I should even say, even the, the uh, I love how they do this, the milling work on the backspacer and the milling on the jipping match. And I always say they're, they, lately they've been doing this more and more. And I like that, that I like they've been doing that. Um, yeah, this one works really well. It's very similar, if not identical. I didn't notice that originally. The multi-row bearings on this feel as good as roller bearings. Super smooth, super controlled. I don't know how they're different. I just remember hearing something about how there's like some kind of washer system in here. And it could just be old literature and talking about, uh, you know, the, the multi-row bearing track itself. Don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It feels similar to a normal multi-row bearing other than it just seems really smooth like a roller bearing. So I, I don't mind it at all. Highly collectible, highly beautiful uh, F95 icebreaker, limited to 100. I don't know how many times I have to say that. It looks sexy. It looks cool. It's a great knife to uh, bust out at the dinner table on a first date to break the ice. Or not. Highly collectible, beautiful knife. Um, I think I'm going to wrap things up on that. Gave you the weight, gave you the measurements. So there's your F95 icebreaker. Hopefully you guys like that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later in the week. Appreciate you stopping by. Check out the website, bladezilla.ca. And uh, like, subscribe, share, leave comments. I'll get back to every one of you. So appreciate you so much. Cheers, guys. Peace.